Hey, how's it going? Today I want to show you the forest swarm. So this is a very interesting swarm architecture that we basically designed from the ground up to allow you to um, dynamically uh, send the task and then this task will be routed to the most specialized agent for that specific task. And so basically it's kind of like a router in which you have a task and then this task is then routed to uh, an agent that is specialized given its prompt to this task. And I'll show you how uh, to get started with it. Um, but yeah, so this is um, uh, basically how you, how you use it. And I'm gonna go to cursor really quickly and show you how to run this. So um, basically you uh, import uh, from swarms, import tree agent, tree for swarm, uh, and then uh, you build your tree. And so there's trees um, and then there's a forest. Uh, the forest is multiple trees, but for every tree, you can have multiple agents. Um, and let's let's see here if uh, uh, this is the diagram. So um, basically, we have a forest, and the forest is kind of like everything. It's every agent. Uh, but then within specific trees, there are different agents. And so when you give it a task, uh, the task will be routed to an agent that is most specialized for that task. Um, so it's kind of like an agent... Uh, uh, it's kind of like an agent storage. It's kind of like agent storage, but it's also like dynamic task routing. Um, and I'll show you how to get started with this now. Um, so if you copy uh, uh, this uh, example um, from swarms, uh, import uh, for swarm tree, tree agents. Um, here we're building our trees. Uh, we have, uh, this is mostly like a financial uh, uh, swarm. Uh, but we could also tell Claude to make us specialized, so we can uh, repurpose this for med uh, medical and healthcare tasks. So we could give this to Claude, and then we could say, um, let's create a medical uh, forest. Uh, specialize all of these agents for different uh, types of diagnosis uh, specialist agents um, and treatment Let's build three trees and uh, make the prompts extensive and so we're gonna have a uh, cloud here generate a new forest and then uh, we'll we'll run that and I'll, I'll basically show you how it works so we'll call this medical forest swarm and uh, it's going to build the uh, the agency here. And so we have a primary care, a primary di uh, diagnos uh, di uh, dietitian. We have a lab analyst, imaging specialist. We have a treatment planning agent, medication manager, intervention specialist. And then we have a follow-up and monitoring tree. So we have a recovery monitor. We have a prevention specialist. And uh, we have a patient educator. Um, and yeah, that's that's our tree so far. So we're gonna copy this, um, and then we're gonna try running this and see uh, what happens precisely. So as I mentioned before, you give it a task. So here we're saying patient presents with persistent headaches for two weeks accompanied by visual disturbances and neck stiffness, a need comprehensive evaluation and treatment plan. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna run this, and then we're gonna see all of the agents collaborating with, uh, collaborating with each other and working with each other uh, to basically help route this task uh, to the nearest agent. And so once once we run this, okay, so we gotta be more specific with the file path. Um, uh, what was this one? Yeah, trees. Okay, now it should work. And actually, let me clean those out. Please. So this is really useful for when you have a bunch of agents and you don't know when to send a task to which agent. Um, essentially, what's going on in the back end is we, we have a, a RAG system that will route your task to the nearest agent uh, based off of cosine similarity. Um, and so uh, here it's running. We're, we're gonna basically embed all of the agents and all of their prompts. And then we're going to essentially uh, get them to, um, to uh, execute on the task. 
So uh, the uh, agent that was selected is the primary uh, diagnostician. And so this task that we just gave it uh, was routed. Patient persists with persistent headaches for two weeks accompanied by visual disturbances and neck stiffness. I uh, need comprehensive evaluation and treatment plan. So what happened here is that uh, this task was routed to uh, this, uh, this agent, the primary dietitian. And so here we have the output, we have patient assessment, um, persistent headache, visual disturbances, uh, neck stiffness. These symptoms raise concern for potential serious condition, uh, conditions such as meningitis, sub subarachnoid hemorrhage, or inter intercranial mass liaisons. Um, preliminary diagnosis considerations, uh, the combination of headache, neck, stiffness, uh, neck stiffness, and visual disturbances may suggest meningitis, especially if accompanied by fever. Subarachnoid hemorrhage, sudden onset of severe uh, headache, often described as a thunderclap headache with neck, uh, neck, neck stiffness, and visual changes could also indicate a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Intercranial mass, persistent headaches, and I'll essentially give you a couple diagnosis uh, possibilities. Then it also gives you next steps. So immediate referral to emergency department due to the presence of red flags, particularly the combination of headache, visual disturbances, and neck stiffness, immediate evaluation in emergent setting is recommended. Neurological examination. A thorough neurological examination could be conducted to assess for any focal neurological deficits. Um, and that's basically kind of like a, a very simple uh, demo. But we can also repurpose this uh, for uh, financial uh, uh, for financial trading. So we're going to take this. Now we're going to say, uh, now let's build an all new forest. Let's build an all new forest uh, specialized uh, for uh, different types of, uh, of financial trading. Uh, mutual funds, index funds, um, what else? ETFs and uh, energy and AI stocks. And so now uh, Claude is going to build a new forest uh, that we can use to uh, basically uh, conduct uh, uh, task completions upon um, very specialized queries. So um, where we're, it's building a mutual fund analyst, it's building index fund specialists, uh, it's building an ETF strategist and um, energy sector analysis, AI technology analyst. And then we have a couple of other portfolio strategist, technical analysis, or risk manager. Um, and then we can copy this and then we can say uh, uh, fund manager forest. Um, and so now we have our fund manager. And so now. Uh, Claude should have given it a task. So analyze current opportunities in the AI sector ETFs considering market conditions and provide a risk adjusted portfolio allocation strategy. Um, so let's see what happens here. Oh, so this is probably not going to run because we need to put the full file path. And uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay, so. I forgot to, to say it, like how to download this. Um, so you could download Swarms uh, with uh, pip install dash capital U Swarms, um, and that should install. You could also, uh, as soon as you download Swarms, uh, it's going to ask you to put in some environment variables. So you could do uh, export uh, workspace directory, and the workspace directory is essentially where all the agents are going to log all their outputs. And um, so here uh, within the forest, you can also put a model name. So if you put a model name, then you can use, uh, in this example, I'm using GPT-4.0, uh, but you could use Claude uh, 2, um, but you would need to put a like a, a anthropic uh, API key or OpenAI key. It defaults to OpenAI. Um, so you would have to do it like this, and then you put your key there. Um, I'm not going to do that because I already have my key. Um, but that, that's kind of like the onboarding process. Uh, so yeah. So we have this worm that uh, Claude built here. We have uh, how many trees? Um, we have three trees, okay. And uh, we're gonna add, we're gonna run this task. So analyze current opportunities in AI sector ETFs. 
uh, considering uh, market conditions and provided risk-adjusted portfolio allocation strategy. Um, so we're going to run that, and then uh, we're going to see the agent uh, complete a task. Now, in the future, uh, what we're probably going to do is, uh, to make this better, to make the forest one uh, better, we're probably going to add uh, the ability to add multiple forests. So if you wanted to run, like, um, if you wanted to have like an entire company marketing product, like a whole company, um, oh, we're, we're getting an error. What is the error? Oh yeah, okay, so that's that's yeah, that's Claude. Um, I don't have a Claude API key there. Um, but in the future, we're probably going to allow you to have multiple um, uh, multiple uh, forests, and then you can combine them together through kind of like a uh, kind of like a mega forest, or so I got to find a word for it, but. Yeah, basically, uh, you could have multiple forests, and then uh, the agents would, um, like, one agent would run, and then the next agent would dynamically find what other agent to contact uh, based off of the query. Um, or we could find a way to chain them together. Um, but that's in the near future. Uh, so the agent that ran is called the Mutual Fund Analyst. And so the AI sector has been uh, seeing significant growth and in interest due to the advancement of machine learning. Uh, data and analytics and automation. However, this sector is subject to high volatility and rapid technological changes. So historical returns analyze the past performance of AI sector ETFs over various time frames, one year, three year, five year returns to understand the growth trajectory. Volatility matters. Um, examine the stand a standard deviation beta of these ETFs to assess their volatili uh, volatility relative to the broader market. Fund manager evaluation. Access to track record of fund managers in managing technology or thematic funds, consistency in strategy and experience in na navigating the tech market cycles. Expense ratios and fee structures. Compare the expense ratios of different AI sectors. So this basically uh, saying like how to like analyze, like how, how would you, um, you know, like invest into a major fund of, of, of AI stocks. Holdings and sector allocation. Review the top holdings within each ETF to ensure diversification across uh, different AI subsectors, fund inflows and outflows, monitor recent inflows or outflows as indications of investor sentiment and liquidity. Uh, risk adjusted return, sharp ra ratio, evaluate the risk adjusted return of each ETF to understand how well compensates investors for the risk taken. Certino ratio. Focus on downside risk by analyzing the Certino ratio, which only considers negative volatility. Um, and then recommendations. Core allocation, 60% uh, invest in broad AI sector ETF with a strong track record, low expense ratio, and diversified holdings. This provide a stable uh, exposure to the AI sector. Tactical allocation. Allocate to a specialized a AI ETF focusing on high growth subsectors such as AI hardware or cloud-based AI services to capture potential upside. Defensive allocation. Consider an ETF with an established tech companies with significant AI investments for downside protection. That would typically be um, like uh, like uh, like uh, Facebook, Amazon, Google, etc. Risk management. Regularly rebalance your portfolio to maintain the desired allocation and accelerate, etc. Um, so now we can be more specific because this is kind of broad. Um, now I'll say, uh, now uh, also provide a list of uh, ETFs. Uh, now create, uh, add in the names of the best uh, AI ETFs that are reliable and uh, align with this strategy and also include uh, where to uh, purchase so we're gonna run it again and hopefully it's gonna be much more specific this is basically just like a tactical um, strategic uh, outline of a plan um, but hopefully the next uh, results could be much more precise with actual ETFs to buy and etc running running processing there you go um, so this is the mutual fund analyst um, etc etc so recommended yeah provided recommended AI sector ETFs global X robotics 
and AI ETF bots, um, strong, strong historical returns with moderate volatility, approximately 0.68 holdings. Focus on, on companies involved in robotics and AI technologies, purchase locations, available on um, major platforms like Vanguard, Fidelity, and Charles Schwab. iShares Robotics and Artificial Intelligence Multi-Sector offers diversified exposure with a balanced risk-adjusted uh, profile, uh, broad exposure to global companies in the AI space, purchase locations, E-Trade, TD, Ameritrade, uh, Robinhood, uh, Robo Global Robotics and Automation uh, Index ETF, Consistent returns with a focus on automation and AI innovation, expense ratio 0.95%, uh, and it's also available. So diversification. Allocate investments across multiple AI ETFs to mitigate uh, sector-specific returns, uh, risks, and enhance diversification. Risk tolerance assessment. Determine your risk uh, tolerance level and adjust the allocation between high-risk bots, robo, and moderate-risk, iRobo. Um, regular monitoring, you know, continuously monitor conditions and adjust the allocation based on uh, performance metrics and economic indicators. Uh, sample allocation strategy, 40% in bots for their exposure to high growth AI companies, 30% in iRobo, 30% in Robo. Um, and yeah, that's a, a demo of the forest swarm. It's uh, kind of dynamic and we're trying to mimic the how forests communicate with each other. So how do trees communicate with each other? Uh, and it's kind of like they all have the shared memory system, and that's that's what's going on here. Um, all the agents know what's going on with the other agents, and um, a task is routed to the most specialized tree or agent in, in this case. Um, yeah, so if you have any ideas on how to improve this or how to make it better, please let us know. Um, check out Swarms, check out the GitHub, and also join our community. You can find our community link uh, by going to swarms.ai. Um, and you'll, feel, you'll see a, uh, a button to join our Discord. And yeah, I hope you like this video. And uh, please subscribe. Please hit the, the like button. And uh, hit the notification bell to get uh, notifications on future videos. And thank you. Have a good day.